Hey guys, The Wood Craftsman. So this is another waterborne wood finishing demonstration. I'm gonna be demonstrating the Sherwin-Williams product finishes product line from their waterborne series. I'm gonna be using the Sherwin-Williams Sherwood Water Reducible Wiping Stain S64 series. I'm gonna be finishing it with two coats of the Sayerlac Hydro Plus waterborne finish in a 20 sheen. Now those of you who are not familiar with Sayerlac, Sayerlac is actually a product line of Sherwin-Williams. They were recently re acquired by Sherwin-Williams several years ago and actually they're based out of Italy so now we're starting to bring in some of the Italian technology into the US. To my understanding Serilac product lines are now almost fully available in all product finish centers so all your chemical coating division stores will more than likely have them or be able to get them for you. Um, Basically, what I'm redoing, what I'm doing here is I'm revisiting waterborne again. Uh, the wipe stain is pretty much the same as what I tried in the past, except it's a different color, and the finish is something new now. Normally, the last time I tried this video, I actually used the Sherwin Williams Sherwood Chem Aqua Plus, which I felt pretty comfortable with. Um, but I was recommended uh, to try this if I really like the Chem Aqua Plus, to definitely try the Sayerlac Hydro Plus. Um, they said it's got all the properties and then some as far as uh, KCMA testing performance. It has uh, improved vertical hang and sag resistance. So I'm really kind of anxious to try that out. So what I did was I built four doors. I did two oak and two birch and two doors, one oak and one birch, I actually created a pre-seal or a wash coat solution. And this wash coat solution is really nothing more than one part Hydro Plus waterborne finish and nine parts water. Now as far as that ratio, I basically took a guess. Uh, typically wash coats in the solvent system goes anywhere from seven to one to 10 to one, depending on what you're trying to get done. What I wanted to do here was, is basically raise the grain and basically seal the pores ever so slightly so when I come back with the uh, orbital sander I can knock all the fibers off and not have any more grain raised but at the same time not really affect the color much. That's the kind of a disadvantage of going to a wash coat especially if you have a lower ratio say for example a 5 to 1 or a 4 to 1 you actually create more of a film on the surface therefore your stains won't bite in as much. It's really depending on what you're trying to accomplish. In this case here I was really after basically pre-raising the grain so that when I put the waterborne wipe stain on, I wasn't actually going to raise the grain any further. Um, so I have two doors that were done with the pre-seal and two that were not, and from what I can uh, tell looking at them, I didn't see a big difference in color. As far as grain raise, I saw a very slight difference, but if I were to do it again, I'd probably lower the ratio a little bit, probably go down to a seven to one. So I have a little bit more solids from the waterborne finish to actually create a very thin film on the surface that'll pre-raise the grain, but at the same time, uh, we'll let the color penetrate as deep as it possibly can. So yeah, this demonstration video is going to basically show the entire process of finishing all four doors from the pre-seal to the finished sanding all the way up to the staining and finishing. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Questions and positive comments are welcome. Thanks for watching.
Okay, so the equipment I'm using for doing this uh, waterborne testing, I'm actually using the Kremlin 1014 again that I purchased a little while ago for waterborne testing. Got the Kremlin JX gun in here set up with a 9152 tip. Uh, it's actually about a uh, 12 thousandths orifice size. It's actually got a pre orifice to help with waterborne, and also it has about a 12 to 13 inch pattern. Um, I just got done spraying and sanding the uh, pre seal, and basically, I have two doors that did a pre-seal on, two they did not, and the pre-seal is nothing more than a nine to one ratio of the Hydroco Plus waterborne top coat um, cut back nine times, or nine parts with water. So uh, it's a real thin wash coat. You just saw me sand it up. And the idea there is to basically pre-raise the grain. And I want to get an understanding as far as how much it actually affects the color. So I'm using the same stain color in all four doors but two of the doors actually have the pre-seal on. Now the pre-seal is totally optional, but I wanted to do it just to see um, if it would help minimize the grain raise and at the same time, how much it would actually affect the color. So that's where we're at with that. Um, the fluid pressure I was using on this is about 300 PSI fluid pressure and about 20 PSI atomizing air, which is probably a little bit high for that wash coat. But um, the next step will be is to stain these two doors, and I'll be using this exact same pump for spraying out the Hydro Plus waterborne top coat from Slayer Lac. Um, the stain I'm actually just going to hand wipe on, because that's typically how they're done here in the shop. So um, spraying would have an advantage and disadvantage as well, but being that most of the stains that are done in the shop here, they're hand wiped on and hand wiped off. So, all right. I won't be spending a lot of time on demonstrating the Sherwin-Williams Sherwood water reducible wipe stain just for the simple reason that I actually did do a full video on the Sherwin-Williams Sherwood water reducible wiping stain and the Sherwood Camaco Plus waterborne finish back in 2011. This video is really more so aimed towards showing the Sayerlac Hydro Plus waterborne finish being it's something new that I have not tried before. One of the things that I noticed with this particular color is it seemed to dry very rapidly. A lot quicker than I remember the water reducible wipe stain to dry on the initial test I did back in 2011. Now this is a custom blend for one of the product finish store's customers and it could very well be that this stain isn't actually a true representation as far as how well or how poorly the water reducible wipe stain works. Um, I do have another gallon of the water reducible wipe stain that's kind of like a medium brown from the original test. I might actually want to compare it to this one here to see if they actually dry the same or if they dry differently. It may very well be that this is more of a standard dry time and that the medium brown I tried uh, earlier was more of an extended dry time. If that was truly the case, I'd definitely want the extended dry time. The other thing that was very annoying about this was the fact that as it did not re-wet very well at all, not to what I remember it to be. Um, definitely if you had a spot where the stain penetrated in the sides and you went back over to re-wet it, it did not re-wet very easily. It was almost better off if you actually took a piece of fine sandpaper and actually sanded it off and then went over it again. Um, you'll see in the final product there's a couple spots I'm really not impressed with. One is especially this flat panel door I was working on earlier. Um, there's actually a spot inside the front that's actually just bad wiping just for some reason the stain did get away on me so it's definitely not the ideal stain but like i said i definitely need to confirm with the product finish store to see if this is normal for this wipe stain or if it might actually have a shortened flash time based on their particular cu customer's requirements one of many advantages as to working with the product finishes store is the fact that they can actually custom match any particular color you're looking for in any type of coating you may be looking for. Such as wipe stains, which is one of their big specialties where it's a wipe stain or a spray stain, they can pretty much make it match any sample that is brought into them. So this particular stain, if I like this color, I could at least have them rematch it, but actually extend the dry time. More than likely by just adding more water and replacing some of the solvents with additional water.